you will get the value for your shear force as 50 kN. Have you understood up to here? You are supposed to find the shear stress, shear force at the mid section and I got that value as 50 kN. Is it okay? Now the next one is area. As you could see here, it is asked to find the shear stress at 50 mm below the top. So we need to consider the section, uh, a layer which is 50 mm below. So the area under consideration will be what? This will be the area under consideration. Right? So I can write the area is equal to what? 150 into 50. That is will be the area under consideration. Can you tell me this value 150 into 50? Someone? is 7500 mm square right now y bar means what from the neutral axis the distance up to the centroid of this right that is the distance of your y bar that is the centroid of the area under consideration distance from the neutral axis to the centroid under the area of the layer which is above under consideration so I could I could write this the total distance here is what this is 125 mm this distance is 150 by 2 125 125 mm so this distance will be what that is 75 mm right that will be 75 mm isn't it so I'll get the y bar distance as 75 plus 50 divided by 2 that is 100 mm. Have you understood that? Have you understood this? That is, I need to find the distance from the neutral axis to a centroid of this shaded area. So, if I see, I have this distance as 250 divided by 2, that is, I will get it as 125. So, the remaining this distance is what? 75. So, 75 plus this is a rectangle section so the center load will be 50 by 2 that is 75 plus 25 and get this as 100 mm i hope you understood this is it fine is it okay students from there i'll get the value for my y bar i is the moment of inertia of the whole section this is a rectangular section <coughs> so it will be dd cube by 12 that is 150 into 250 cube divided by 12. We'll keep it like this. This is millimeter raised to 4. And B is the width of the section considered. Here the width of the section considered is 150 mm. So if I substitute over for all these values, I'll get tau is equal to 50 kilo newton, that is 50 into 10 raised to 3 into area that is 7500 mm square into y bar that is 100 divided by BD cube by 12 that is I 150 into 250 cube divided by 12 into 150 can you tell me this value in the class uh, means if you try to understand here itself there is no need of studying it again it is that much easy portion please I told you you just need to understand one equation that is the only thing here yeah, you will get it as 1.28. Please check that, okay? Who told this value? 5 point, please check that. You will get this value as 1.28 Newton per mm square. So that is the shear stress value at 50 mm below the top edge. Is it fine? Have you understood this? Students, have you understood? Is it fine? So similar kind of questions uh, will come. Only the thing is that this shear force diagram you need to know how to draw the shear force diagram and you need to know how to get the correct value from that because only then you can proceed to all the other values over here and the other thing that can change is the distance from the neutral axis so this was the case for a rectangular section now we will see one case that is the variation of your shear force diagram you don't need to know this uh, derivation at all but still, I will write one uh, for your rectangular section. You need to see how the shear stress vary along a cross section. First, I will write it for your rectangular section having B width and D depth. 
need to know how this uh, the how the shear stress vary along the section so what i do is i have the neutral axis over here i will consider a small section say i will consider a, a section which is so i i will take the <coughs> y bar distance i'll consider like this this is my y bar distance so i know the shear stress is equal to what tau is equal to f a y bar divided by i b right isn't it the area of the section area of the section i can take test this is the area of the section right this is the area which is under consideration right so i can i can take this as what that is b into what is this distance this will be d by 2 right so this distance i could take it as what this distance i could take it as d by 2 then distance i could take it as d by 2 minus y isn't it l <coughs> i'll repeat once again the area of this triangle rectangle i could take it as the width that is b into this distance i know the total distance here is d by 2 and i have considered this as y so this distance will be what d by 2 minus y isn't it similarly i have this y bar is equal to i could write it as what y plus d by 2 minus y right divided by 2 because this distance I could I could take this distance as what that is d by 2 minus y so up to here up to here the distance will be what d by 2 minus y the whole divided by 2 and from the neutral axis if I consider that distance is y plus d by 2 minus y by 2 isn't it is it okay that is I could write this one as this one as y Plus d by 4 minus y by 2, right? That is, I could write this one as y by 2 plus d by 2. Or if I am taking 1 by 2 outside, I could write this one as so d by 4. I could take the, write this one as d by 2 plus y, isn't it? 1 by 2 into d by 2 plus y. All right. You can you can see the calculation, but it will come like this. Okay, you can see the calculation later, and it will come like this. So that I can write this tau is equal to f into area. I got it as b into d by 2 minus y. That is, I will take it as b into d by 2 minus y into y bar. Y bar is nothing but this distance is y bar. This distance is y bar. That is one by two into d by two plus y. The whole divided by. I'll take this. I'll keep this i as i itself. That is i into b. So from here you could see this b and this b will get cancelled, and effectively I'll get this one as f by two i into. You could see here two terms. That is. d by 2 minus y and d by 2 plus y what is the form of that i could write that as a plus b into a minus b right this is d by 2 minus y and this is d by 2 plus y so i could write it as a minus b into a plus b that is d square by 2 square minus y square that is a square minus b square right that is i am getting this one as f by 2 i into d square by 4 minus y square so what i need to i need i came to explain is that you could see here this contains a term which is y square which means your variation will be what parabolic right all right and at any distance of y i, I could write the value for my shear stress isn't it That is, I got the value for tau in terms of shear stress as what? Tau is equal to f by 2i into d square by 4 minus y square. You could see here, 
for any section the shear force remains the shear force remains same the moment of inertia is same the depth of the section is same so only variation is happening for your value for y right if y the value maati kodutu kenjal i'll get any value for the shear stress at different depths isn't it isn't it so and you could see the variation of the y is what it is parabolic which means at any depth if i take the variation it will be parabolic in nature and we will start drawing the variation here the first one is we are having the rectangle like this the neutral axis is over here neutral axis is over here what will be the shear stress at the extreme edge i will call this one as 1 this 2 and this one as 3 What will be the value for shear stress at one? You have tau is equal to f by two i into d square by four minus y square. What is the value for y at one? <coughs> What is the value for y at one? What is the value for y at one? This d by two, right? Hello. Oh, no. what is the value for y at one? Can you please type in the message box? Can you guys please type in the message box? What is the what do you mean by y? Y is the distance measured from the neutral axis to the area under consideration, right? The so center of the area under consideration. Hello. That is why no one is. i could say here this at this point of consideration at 1 y is equal to what d by 2 right that is if i substitute over here i'll get the value for tau is equal to what this i'll substitute as d by 2 that is i'll get it as d square by 4 which means tau is equal to what 0 isn't it isn't it similarly at 2 At two, the value for y is what zero, which means I'll get the maximum value for tau. That is, tau is equal to f by two i into d square by four, right? That is this value I'll get as f by two i into d square by four, and also at three, y is equal to d by two, which means I'll get the value for tau as zero. So I got the value for tau here. That is. If I take this as reference, this is zero. This is zero, and here I got this as f by two i into d square by four, isn't it? And I know the variation of this is parabolic, which means I need to connect it like this. This will be parabolic, isn't it? Have you understood this, <coughs> students? Have you, have you understood? And this is the maximum value for my. This is tau max. That is the maximum value for my shear stress, and it occurs at the neutral axis. So, if you compare with the bending stress and shear stress, the maximum value for shear stress occurs at the neutral axis, and the maximum value for bending stress occurs at the top flange. You could see the variation for that, okay? And here you need to by heart this one. That is the tau max. Is equal to 1.5 tau average, where tau average is nothing but your shear force divided by cross-sectional area. That is shear force divided by d into d. For a rectangular section, the tau average is 1. Tau max is 1.5 tau average. So, is it fine? Is it okay, students? And if it is asked to find the tau average, tau average, it is nothing but your shear force divided by the cross-sectional area. Here, for rectangular section, the cross-sectional area is B into D. Is it fine? And the next one is this is for this was for a rectangular section. Now the next one is for a circular section. You don't need to understand this. The neutral axis will be here. So the variation I could draw it as. I did. I will consider three sections. That is. One, the neutral axis two, 
entry over here. So if I draw the variation for these three cases, I know at the at the top it will be at the at the top here it will be zero and over here it will be zero because your distance from the neutral axis is maximum over there and at the mid section it will be the y bar will be zero. As a result it will get the maximum and the variation I could draw it like this. The variation will be like this. And this is the value for your tau max. The variation will be parabolic and that is the value for tau max. Here for rectangle circular section tau max is 1.33 tau average where tau average is shear force divided by cross sectional area that is shear force divided by pi by 4 into this is having d diameter then pi by 4 into d square so the next one you need to understand is for a circular section tau average is so tau max is 1.33 tau average is it fine is it okay you need to buy out this value because you are not supposed to have the derivation part of this because this is actually we will get it by uh, deriving the value for tau max but you are not supposed to have any derivation so you just need to understand this tau max is 1.33 to average for this circular section and uh, 1.5 to average for a rectangular section and there comes one more cross section but it is not widely used so uh, but can be asked as a theory question that is the thing you are having a isosceles triangle as a beam section so or, can you tell me this is having h height h height and b width with respect to the y axis where will be the centroid where will be the centroid of the section in the centroid of the area will be at h by 3 right that is somewhere here it will be at h by 3 from here so if I draw the neutral axis like this it will be like this neutral axis right and here if I draw the she uh, shear stress variation I am going to get it like this the shear stress variation will be like this <coughs> the maximum will be at the mid span and that I will get it as this is tau max and I will denote this one as tau neutral axis. So after comparing all this, I will get this tau neutral axis as 1.33 tau average and tau max as 1.5 tau average. That is, I will get tau max as 1.5 tau average and tau at neutral axis as 1.33 tau average you just need to understand this also this can be asked in the a part type questions for the university or the, for the series so you just need to understand for three types of sections the value for tau max and tau average tau neutral axis in this circular case circular and rectangular case tau max is equal to tau neutral axis so you don't need to consider it separately but here the neutral axis is not at the mid section so then you need to find the tau max and tau neutral axis separately is it fine? Is it okay? Is there any doubt up to here? Students, is it, is it okay? Now we will see uh, two more questions and we will wind up this session. It is question number 4 of your problem sheet. A simply supported beam of span 1.6 meter and having cross section 160 mm by 280 mm deep carries a point load of W at the center. If the permissible shear stress is 1.2, calculate the load W. That is the reverse to the question what we have seen here. This is exactly reverse to the question what we have seen here. That is the third question. So, are you able to see this question now? So I will draw this, there is a simply supported beam of span 1.6 meter having cross section 
160 mm by 280 mm there is a point load w at the center if the permissible stress that is the tau is 1.2 newton per mm square the value for shear stress is given calculate the load which can be applied over here we have done a similar kind of question in the case of bending stress so what i need to do start here is i need to draw the shear force diagram i need to draw the shear force diagram you could see here this is the case of a simply supported beam with point load at the center so the shear force diagram will be like this and since this is a symmetric load the shear force value over here with the reaction here will be w by 2 W by 2, so this will be the value for shear stress. The shear force will be W by 2, W by 2, right? So here we'll get the value for this one as the shear force as W by 2. I'll keep the shear force as W by 2 itself because that is the maximum value for shear force. I know the value for tau as F A Y bar divided by I B. I'll keep this shear force as W by 2 itself and I will find this value for my load W and from the stress variation diagram where is the maximum shear stress coming the maximum shear stress is coming at the maximum shear stress is coming at the mid section right cross section maximum shear stress is coming at neutral axis right so in the case of limiting case, I need to find the maximum shear stress at the neutral axis. So I, the area under consideration will be what? This one, right? That will be the area under consideration. Because I need maximum shear stress written over there. It is at the neutral axis. So I need to consider the layer at the neutral axis. So the area under consideration will be this one. So I will get the value for area as 160 into 280 divided by 2. That is 140 mm square right isn't it and the value for y bar i could i could see this is my value for y bar that is y bar is equal to 140 140 divided by 2 that is 75 mm is it fine is it okay and I is the moment of inertia of the whole section that is 160 into 280 cube divided by 12 and B is the width of the section considered that is 160 mm. So substituting these values I hope you understood these values I'll substituting these values I'll get 1.2 that is tau is equal to the shear force I have written in terms of I have written in terms of W that is I can write here that is W by 2 into area is 160 into 140 70 divided by 70 divided by I is 160 into 280 Q divided by 12 into width under consideration that is again 160 mm. So here the only unknown value is what here W. So like this I will get the value for W as 71.67H kN. Have you understood this? Students, have you understood this? So this is another kind of problem that can come over this. That is to find the safe load it can carry. And if you are asked to draw the shear force, uh, shear stress variation also, you could do it from here, right? You just need to consider three sections and you need to know the shear stress variation is parabolic. Is it fine? And the last question that we are going to discuss for today's class is draw the shear stress variation for an I section. That is, this is an I section. And draw an I section here. Draw the shear stress variation for an I section of uniform thickness of 20 mm for flange and web. That is, this is having this is called as the flange of this I section that is 20 mm and the web thickness is also 20 mm. The total height of the section is 340. 
the total height is given as 340 mm that is the total height is 340 which means this distance is 300 mm right this distance is 300 mm right overall width of the flange is 150 the width of the flange is this is not the scale of it please excuse me this is 150 mm the shear force the section for concentration is 10 kN that is the shear force is directly given as 10 kN you are supposed to draw the variation of shear stress see in the question you are asked to draw the variation of shear stress and now you know the variation of any shear stress across the cross section is parabolic right Alright. so what, what I do here is I will consider three points where I could draw I, I need to find the shear stress variation that is every day change on the first I will consider the neutral axis then there is a top point over here there is a top point over here with a top neutral axis Pinna change there is a change in geometry over here. So I'll call this point as another point, this one. So if I find the value, I'll call this one as 1, this is 2, and the neutral axis I'll take it as 3. So if I calculate the value for shear stress at these three points, I could draw the shear stress variation, right? Isn't it? Isn't it students? So the first case that is I have this I section over here. I'll draw it once again. Have it at, at point one. I need to draw it at point one. So at one, if I have the I section, it is like this. Right. At point one, what is the value for your y bar? This is my neutral axis. Right. If I take, I know the value for tau at one. If I am writing that is f a y bar divided by i b. Right. So at one, a is equal to what? There is no area above the neutral axis, so it is zero. So I'll get the value for tau is what? Tau is 0 newton mm square, right? Isn't it? So that is done. Now I need to consider I need to consider H2. Right? That is H2. H2 means what it is? It is over here, right? This is 2. Alright? So the area under consideration here is what? This is my area under consideration. This is my area under consideration. Isn't it? So if I write tau at 2 is equal to F A Y bar divided by I B. I know the value for F. F is given as, in the question F is given as 10 kN. It is given directly F is equal to what? 10 kN. So I have F is equal to 10, sorry, F is equal to 10 kN. That is 10 newton raised to 3 newton. Area is nothing but the area above this. That is, I have this width as 150 mm and the thickness as 20 mm. This thickness is 20 mm. So the area I'll get it as 150 into 20, that is 3000 mm square. I'll keep it like this. Y bar is the distance of distance from the neutral axis to the centroid and of the area under consideration so that is the centroid of this area is over here this distance is my y bar right i have found this distance as this is 300 mm this is 300 mm so this distance will be 150 mm and this distance is 10 mm, that is 20 by 2. So the total y bar distance I will get as 150 is 20 by 2, that is 160 mm, isn't it? Now, 
i i is the moment of inertia of the whole section right alle i is the moment of inertia of the whole section similar kind of question we have done last time for bending stress that is we have taken this i as bd cube by 12 of the i section minus 2 into bd cube by 12 i have considered this as a two rectangular section i hope you remember that we have done the same kind of question here i have considered this as two rectangular portion i have subtracted this another rectangular portion and this whole as a top rectangle so from there i will get the value for this one as this b is 150 into 340 cube that is for the whole rectangle minus the small ones that is 2 into what is this distance for uh what is the distance for this e distance for that right is total is 150 mm and add me 20 korchu kenja the remaining is 130 this is 130 divided by 2 right and this is 130 divided by 2 isn't it alle the total is 150 This thickness is 20. The remaining is 130 divided by 2 and 130 divided by 2. Isn't it? Alright. That is like 65 mm. This is 65 mm. So I'll get this B as 65 into the depth here is 300. That is 300 cube divided by 12. And from there I'll get the value for I as I get the value for I after calculation. I'll get as 198.8 into 10 raised to 6 millimeter raised to 4. Is it fine? Have you understood how to calculate this I? We have discussed the same in case of your bending stress. So from there, I'll get the value for T. Now the thing here is the crucial thing here is B. What will be the value for B at this section two? That is the shear stress value. I could I could write to at two is equal to if I had got this value as if that is ten into ten raised to three into area is one fifty into twenty into y bar that is one sixty divided by i one ninety eight point eight into ten raised to six into this b I have. This B value I could take it as 150 mm as well as 20 mm. I have two values for B. That is both 150 and 20. Have you understood why we got two values? Is it fine? Have you understood that? So I will write this toe to corresponding to B is equal to 150 as well as I, have, I need to consider this toe to corresponding to. B is equal to. I need to consider the total corresponding to B is equal to 20 mm also. Is it fine? Have you understood? That is, I need to substitute over here 120 and here same for this. I need to substitute here 20. And I'll get this values as for 150. I'll get it as 0.161 newton per mm square. And for 20 mm, I'll get as 1.21 newton per mm square. Is it okay, students? Have you understood this? Right. Have you understood up to here? We have considered the section over here. We have considered the section over here. Is it fine? There. You know the value for tau is F A Y bar divided by I B. Here, have you understood how to get the value for F A Y bar and I? Other one slide. So only the thing is that value for B. When you consider the section two two, section two two, if you are considering here, you have a B value of one fifty, as well as there is a B value of twenty also, right? 
ആ സെയിം സെക്ഷനിൽ തൊട്ട് മേ ആ സെക്ഷൻ നോക്കി കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ തൊട്ട് മേളിലോട്ടുള്ള വാല്യൂ ഫോർ വൺ ബി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ വൺ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ തൊട്ട് താഴെ അതെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ട്വന്റി ആണ് അല്ലെ ഇത് രണ്ട് വാല്യൂ ഫോർ വൈ ഉണ്ട് ആ സെയിം സെക്ഷനിൽ അല്ലെ രണ്ട് വാല്യൂ ഫോർ ബി ഇല്ലേ ആ സെക്ഷനിൽ That is, a man looking from here has uh, the value for B. If you see like this, you have the B like this. Or you have from the neutral axis. Or you have the B like this, right? It is like this. B section. And the value will be B. Much like. And the value for B under. So I need to find the shear stress for those two values. That is for 150 as well as 20. And correspondingly, I will get the value as 0.161 and 1.21. It's fine. Is it okay? That is, I got the value for I uh, I do uh, H one two, and now I need to find it three. Okay, that is right. We need to find it three. My I section is like this. Two, three. My I section and two I section. Like this. I section is like this. The neutral axis I am considering is over here, and this is my third point, right? So the area about this third point is this is my area about the third point. This is the total area about the third point, right? Alle, alle. Is it okay, students? This is the area about the third. Are you able to see this? That is, I know this value is K Y bar divided by I B, right? So the area about the third point, I could write this is 150 mm. This is 150 mm. This is 20 mm. And the total distance here is that is 300. So which means the distance is 150 mm, right? This is not to the scale. Have you understood this? this is, so the total area I could write it as area is one. I'll divide this into two figures. I'll divide this into two. This is one, and this is two. So I could write area is equal to 150 into 20 for the first one, plus 150 into 20 for the second one. Is it okay? That is, I'll get it as 150 into two. That is. Thousand mm square. Have you understood that? Now y bar. Y bar means what? The distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of this particular area under consideration. So here the area under consideration is what? Actually, an asymmetrical section. The area under consideration. I could I could draw it like this, right? Okay, this is the. If I draw it separately. This is the area under consideration. There is the neutral axis goes like this. This is the area under consideration, right? For the T section, the area under consideration, no one knows. And I have divided this into two. There is first one, this one. This is second one. Is it? ഇവിടെ നിങ്ങൾ വൈ ബാർ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കണമെങ്കിൽ യു നീറ്റ് ബോ ടു യുവർ പ്രീവിയസ് ബേസിക്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വൈ ബാർ ഇസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു വാട്ട്സ് എ വൺ വൈ വൺ പ്ലസ് എ ടു വൈ ടു ഡിവൈഡ് ബൈ എ വൺ പ്ലസ് എ ടു റൈറ്റ് ദിസ് ഇസ് യുവർ സെൻഡ്രോയിഡ് ബേസിക്സ് ഐ വിൽ കൺസിഡർ ദി സെൻഡ്രോയിഡ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് വൺ ഇസ് ഓവർ ഹിയർ ആൻഡ് ദി സെൻഡ്രോയിഡ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് വൺ ഇസ് ഓവർ ഹിയർ സോ വൈ വൺ എ വൺ ഐ വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് എസ് 150 into 20. I hope that you remember this. 150 into 20. A2 is also 150 into 20 because this is 150 mm. 
and the thickness here is 20 mm. Formula to you remember that. And y1, y1 cuts pray. y1 is the distance from the neutral axis so to the centroidal of this so this that is this is my reference axis e distance le y1 nu arnale alle alle do first figure inde centroid distance from the reference axis right adile y1 nu arnale and that is from here from here to here that is 150 and from here to here that is 20 by 2 that is 10 it is total I get it as 150 plus 20 by 2 that is 160 right and y2 is y2 no more than the second figure in the center of gravity from the reference axis and that is this distance right that is 150 divided by 2 that is 75 isn't it Alright, is it? Is it? So substituting this, I'll get the value for my y bar as. We don't know whether that substitute is equal. We'll get the value for y bar. So you know, y bar is equal to. That's what written here. Substituting that over here, you'll get the value for y bar as 117.7 mm. So now you got the value for y bar. You know. Tau is equal to F A Y bar divided by I B. F is nothing but we have seen here the shear force acting at this section is the shear force acting at this section is 10 into 10 raised to 3. The area is the area under consideration that is I can write the area is A1 plus A2 and Y bar distance is now found. I is the moment of inertia of the whole section that you get it as 198.8 into 10 raised to 6 and B is the width of the section. Here the width of the section we are considering the width over here so it is 20 mm. So substituting here that is 10 into 10 raised to 3 into 150 into that is 20 that is A1 A1 and A2 are same that is into 2 I will take it then 117.7 divided by 198.8 into 10 raised to that is 10 raised to 6 10 raised to 6 into B that is 20 you will get this value as 1.77 Newton per mm square that is the value for tau 3 so, so now we have obtained the value for the shear stress at the level 3 that is at the neutral axis at 1 and at 2 so I obtained the value for shear stress at, at 1 I obtained it as, I will take it as tau 1 as 0 Newton per mm square that is 1 is over here 2 is over here and 3 is over here so if I extend this one you could see if I draw the variation then if I draw the variation I have 2 I have 2 values that is 0 0.16 1 newton per mm square and 1.21 newton per mm square that is at this point if I draw a baseline like this if I draw a baseline like this that is here at 1 which is 0 so here also due to symmetry I can say it is 0 at 2 you have 2 points that is point 0.161 and point 1.21 that is you have 2 values over here and tau 3 I got it as 1.77 Newton per mm square that is tau 3 I will get it as I get it as 1.77 Newton per mm square so you have the values like this and we have seen that the variation of this shear stress along the along the length is parabolic so if I if I complete this from here to here it is parabolic along the cross section then again going like this going like this straight like this. so you will get the variation in this one so I hope you are clear with this that completes your uh, the fourth module you could do any numerical from the problem sheet I have provided thank you